I do smell the smoke. Yeah, we fried it. That's fabulous. So today we have the car car back with us. We are going to be installing a permanent USB charge cable. Now, there is a couple different ways you can go about doing this. In most modern cars, when you turn the key off, it turns off your cigarette lighter. So if you have your phone charging using one of these little guys here that you can get for just a couple dollars, we actually got this one for free. If you turn off your car while charging your phone, oftentimes it will actually take power away from your cigarette lighter, or in some cases there might actually be a timer. So what you wanna to do to make sure that your car actually has it go off is you wanna turn your key off, leave your phone charging, and kind of give it about anywhere between 30 seconds, five minutes. Yeah, about five minutes. Most cars will shut the computers down in five minutes. And, and see if your phone is still charging. If you want to keep your system the way it is, all you have to do if it turns off after, uh, after the key comes out or it times out, all you have to do is remove the power off of your cigarette lighter, go and either create a constant or find a constant that is open and bring it over to your cigarette lighter so you always have power. And don't worry about running your car battery out. It would take hundreds of phones, iPads, laptops to run out a car battery. As long as you're not trying to hook like a, I don't know, like a microwave or something to it. You have a high powered laptop with a big graphics processor. Yeah, you could eat a car battery in three to four hours. But those are, you know, those are taking a lot of power. A phone, you could probably charge 100 phones to 200 phones on a car battery before it's even starting to show voltage drop. Right, and so in our case where we're just doing a phone, we shouldn't have a problem with uh, any battery issues. But today we're gonna to be actually doing something a little bit more extreme than just replacing the power wire to the cigarette lighter. As you may know, this car had a lot of water in it and the cigarette lighter was so corroded that when I saw it originally while I was pulling the interior out, I, I didn't even try, I just chucked it. It was completely rusted out. And now that I think back on it, I don't know if that was probably the right idea because we could have probably cleaned it out with a little bit of elbow grease. Mm -hmm. But I'm actually gonna show them the technique that we used to wire the race car when we did this. Same technique was used on the other white E36 and the blue E30 was all done using this method. Basically what we'll be doing is taking the power and the ground on this thing here and wiring it directly into a power and ground and then you'll just plug in your phone. It gets a little bit messy, it's not the most pretty thing, but you can just kind of slip it behind the dash and have your cable coming out the front. If you've never changed your cable, it doesn't really matter too much. If you're changing it a lot, you might have to look at some different options. I know that's a lot of information right off the bat, but we're gonna show you a couple different ways on how to do this so that we can have our phones constantly charged whether the car is on or off. All right, so this looks like a massive mess, which it is, but at least we have it kind of organized. So we found this wire here which is a constant power. I'm not sure where we got it from, but we double checked to make sure that it was a constant power by making sure the key was out of the car completely and the car had been turned off for several minutes. And this is a constant power. And then of course we have our ground here. So now all I gotta do now is just make sure I know which one is positive and negative. I believe based on the research I was doing that this is your positive and your sides are your negative. We'll be taking this whole assembly. It'll look kind of ugly because we'll have like duct tape on it and stuff like that, but we'll put it behind the dash and then this wire will come up through here. This is our iPhone cable, our lightning cable. It's gonna come through this little hole right here. And then David can use this anytime he wants to, whether the car is on or off. I do smell the smoke. Yeah, we fried it. That's fabulous. So a little bit of a modification. We also fried this one, I think. Yeah, we did, we fried this one. So. We were playing to see which one was positive and negative, and we ended up frying this one because we did it backwards. So, just so everybody knows, watch the whole video first, unless you've watched up until just a little bit ago and then bailed on us. Uh, this is positive. This is your ground. On the so, sides. Yeah, so you want power and ground. So what we're gonna be doing is now we're gonna take this one apart. It's the exact same thing. The only difference on this one is we've got a one amp and a 2.1 amp charger on it. It looks like the iPhones don't like the one amp uh, setting on this. So we're gonna be using higher amp charge port to charge our phones. So now it's time to see if we can't break this one. So this is the inside of this one. And this one's actually probably a little bit better set up for us. So we'll use this one for our ground here. And then there is our power coming off the front. So we just got to figure out how to do this without uh, making the system too mad. Actually, if, if I look at this, this is actually loose, David. Which one? The power. So I'll have to resolder it on the board. Oh, geez. That's probably one of the reasons we were having problems with it. 
It's okay to find faults. What's not okay is to have faults and not find them. Mm -hmm. It won't be super pretty, but it's not gonna go anywhere. Like I said, as janky as this looks, uh, we have our ground here, power coming out the back, everything is all now taped up. This is what it looks like inside of my race car as well. Uh, it looks just like this. The only difference between my car and this car is that there's no extension on this one. In my car, I've got something like this and I've got an extension that I bought off of Amazon for a couple bucks. And what that allows me to do is actually go to a panel like this, where you drill a hole, you put it in, you thread it, and then it gives you this really nice, pretty, mm -hmm. um, either single or double USB uh, option. So this is actually what mine looks like back behind the dash, but this is what this one's gonna look like more permanently. Uh, if we decide to do something else later, if, if David wants to do one on the dash, we can easily put one here on the license plate, not a big problem, just drill a hole right there. And then we can put this even more secure, deeper in the dash. But we're gonna now plug this in. I believe it was the bottom one. It is. Charging. charging perfect so now what we're gonna do the rest of this basically pretty simple we're just gonna find a really good spot back behind here where it's nice and secure and tape it and uh, tape it or put some zip ties on it make sure that we're not gonna be uh, having it drop down into the footwell or something like that where it's getting kicked or pulled on or anything like that Well, thanks everybody for watching. Hopefully that helped you out on your project. Whether you've got a daily driver that you're just trying to get your phone to charge while the car is off, or you've got race cars like these where you've got things missing and you really just kind of want to hardwire something like a USB port in, this is an excellent option. It does look a little bit jank, so hopefully that wasn't a little too intense for some of you, but this is now the fourth vehicle that I've had it on. The oldest setup that we have like this is close to four or five years old at this point, and I have not had any failures yet. So just make sure that you solder really well. Make sure that you put the ground and power where it's supposed to be so you don't fry anything out. And then when you're all done with that, make sure that you strap it down somewhere so that it can't rattle around or have the possibility of somebody hitting it with their foot if it were to fall into the footwell or something like that. So thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed today's content, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, leave any comments or questions down in the comment section below. We do a really good job of replying to questions. And if any question, it gets too complicated, we can absolutely make a video describing or explaining whatever topic it was that you had a question about. Also make sure to check out our Patreon link in the description below. Our Patreon members get to enjoy early ad-free access to a lot of our content. We record several weeks, if not several months out sometimes, and our Patreon members get to see that a lot sooner than everybody else. Thanks everybody again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.